Let's start our videos for today. Hello, hello, my dear friends. Hello, hello, my dear friends. Best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Dr. Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper and scientist and teacher. And this is my channel about entomology, about in science of insects, about nature, about beekeeping, about education and about Ukraine as well, because now I am in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, and many things now are just going on around and inside Ukraine, connecting about not only about nature, but about people, about society, and many things are pretty strange and disgusting. But nevertheless, I should start about from the news from Ukraine, and then we will be following to news about insects in Ukraine, for instance, insects in the culture. So I prepared some videos with cultures of insects, so, so I will present them for you. But what about news in Ukraine? Yes, I woke up morning time, maybe six o'clock, with signal of air raid alert. Yes, it was a sign that our crazy neighbors, I mean Russia, sent some missiles to Ukraine, and it was quite strange because the message was that they are coming through our borders from the south and from the east, so and expected the soon. So uh, in unknown time, because they are spreading all around Ukraine. So and then I slept again, and approximately at nine o'clock I woke up a second time because it was some. One explosion, then a second explosion, and our anti-aircraft system was doing pretty well shooting these missiles or maybe drones down. So because some crazy Iranian drones, so small aircrafts without pilots, drones, they were flying also to Ukraine making some damages. So it was quite unclear how many of them were coming, what time were they coming, new one. It was still the time of air raid alert, till uh, one o'clock. So all transportation was stopped, people spread all around the city in some hidden places, where possible, where possible, where is possible, just go out to the hidden place, if it is not possible, refuge is not visible somewhere around, so to metro or just go behind the door, behind the kitchen. So two explosions, at least in my region, was pretty not visible, but I heard it very well, because sound is spreading. So and finally it was message with Something was shut down and some explosions were in somewhere around. And after that, in the evening time, was the official message in use that uh, approximately 47 missiles and uh, drones were shut down in our Kyiv city region, but more were spread around in other regions of Ukraine. So 47 drones were shut down and probably maybe five just fell down and made some destruction in, air, in our infrastructure. Fortunately, our aircraft defense system were working very well because majority of all these crazy drones were shut down and, and crazy missiles. And all just civilians could should could do nothing, just go to a metro station or just some hidden place, refuge if it is possible. If not possible, sit down, drink a tea, just behind the wall in behind the kitchen and just praying for the safety. They are crazy really. So uh, everything is possible and everything is impossible. Well, but finally came quiet, but one day before was the same situation due because 
They sent also these crazy drones in night time till the morning time. So the situation with air alert were during the half of night, as well as half of morning, half of day, for several, several hours. Well, what's about insects? Insects, this is a more pleasant idea, pleasant subject to talk about it in any time, all the time, about insects, about in invertebrates, about crustaceans. I do not have just honeybees in my home, because they were sleeping inside beehives outside of houses, in beehives and hidden places somewhere, in beekeeping arm, in a beekeeping farm. But I have some other invertebrates. I did some video for that, and I will present it. So you can recognize what is this system, what are these animals. Yes, yes, these are beetles. These are beetles. I know who is this nearby around? Near beetles, something like a yellow creatures. Yes, these are beetles too, but these are not adults. These are pupae. These are pupae. And who are these adults? These adults are very common uh, breeding, commonly breeding beetles, mealworm beetles, but not the big one, mealworm, not from the genus Tenebrio. This is from genus Ulomoides, Ulomoides dermistoides. Sometimes it's called like a healer beetle, healer beetle or medicine, medicine beetle. And who is this yellow one just on the right side? This is a larva, larval stage of a beetle, larva. So larva is active, just crawling around in searching for food. Pupa just can move a little bit with some spines on both sides for self-protection, because you see, larva is coming, larva sometimes can destroy unprotected pupa, because larva is coming, can eat dead adults, some adults already dead, because she's searching for food, can eat cereals, or just dry bread in this jar, and you see some little bit movement of Pupa, pupa are moving a little bit, trying to protect. And there is a skins, sh shells after the molting of this larry. Larry can molt about six, seven times during the life stages, life cycle. And then final life stage will be pupa. And from pupa after about 10, 14 days will be hatching adult beetle. This beetle, which is belonging to the family Tenebrionide. And what is doing this right on the right side of the beetle? Just searching for be another beetle? No, no. Probably just trying to recognize by smell that second be another beetle alive or not alive. And try to feed on them. Because this is, for some beetles, very common situation. This is cannibalism, when larvae can eat Big larvae can eat small larvae, and some beetles, stronger beetles, can eat weaker beetles. That's all just dead bodies of beetles for to receive some proteins. You see here again on the picture, this is yellow larva and many beetles, the same Ulamoides, Dermistoides, family Tenebrionide, or in terminology, term word. Mealworm beetles, mealworm beetles, or darkling beetles, mealworm because they are eating very often mealworm, meal, uh, different cereals and producing these worms, mealworm beetles, or just on artificial meal, for instance, for pets, for dog pets, who they can eat, cats pe pets, food, home, can eat uh, very well, but also you can eat egg, cereals, dry bread, some apples, some dry fruits, in captivity, in culture. And here again, these are pupae of different colors, even some pupae with visible black, blackish eyes. Just you can recognize segmentation, and you can recognize with the head and two black eyes of pupa and some shells of... Uh, 
skin shells from the larvae, from a smaller larvae, which are becoming a bigger larvae size. So these beetles are very easy for keeping in captivity of their culture and can be used either for feeding some pets, some pets like ants in formicariums, formicariums, just some small lizards, chameleons, maybe some frogs in captivity in the aquarium. And also sometimes can be used for feeding human beings after for some diseases, but this is questionable. Sometimes quite easy to keep not only in beetles, but some invertebrates can be easily kept in captivity. This is not insect. In my third video I show this is not insect. This is something strange. This creature has a many legs. Two antennae, two antennae like B, two antennae, moving antenna. Yes, this is antenna. It changed. Legs we became antenna. But what's about creature? Who are this creature? This creature is quite funny. This is not insect. These are not insects because many of them in a culture. It's quite easy to find them somewhere in leaf litter. In a garden, in orchard, in your backyard or place, somewhere between leaves, on fall, between fallen leaves in leaf litter. Because these are wood lices. Wood lices. So they are close to another arthropods and other like crustaceans. They're more close to crabs. And you see number of legs, not six legs like in insects, but more legs. About 10, 11 pairs of legs. And you seen just these are gray color and one was just very light because they, they are growing. This is already big size. Biggest size for these creatures approximately 10 millimeters, like a nail. And this is a small one, small, just a larva. And who are this yellowish one? This is not another species. This is the same species, but after, mo bef after molting. When they are molting, they are taking off the skin. And this creature becoming darker, but a dark, dark shell going out and so the creature becoming much lighter for a certain period of time because this is surface is done from heating and heating should be hardening. This is the same procedure like molting for larvae or for insects or just molting, for instance, or just emergence of a beetle from the pupa. Certain period of time beetle will be very, very light. So the same wood lice is very light for short period, maybe one, two days will be very light, with very light color. We have visible head part with head, head with had some eye, had eyes in group, united in groups, see pretty close segmentations, and polyroly, polyroly, we have another name, polybox, polybox. Some species they like to make to just like a ball. If you are taking taking them in hands, they're trying to pro be protected, especially larvae. This big size wood lices, they do not make balls, but smaller size easily make, can make a ball. If you touch them, they are making a ball, so they attach legs together. And for protection, we're making a kind of ball and becoming moveless for a short period of time, for a few seconds. So you will forget about them and so on. They will be running very fast again in some hidden places between leaves or between cracks of some stones. Because they're living sometimes near the stones, hiding very well under the stones. So, so these are crustaceans, crustaceans, wood lices, or polybe, polybelly, polybugs, polybugs. 
very funny, very funny creatures and very easy to keep them in captivity and how to observe them. Today I use uh, my camera to make approximately half of screen size of these wood lices. So I will show them maybe next videos as well. Because they are very funny, they are very funny to put them on the back. Just I can try to show it again. When I put them on the back, I try to turn around and move in, move, move in, so you can see how many legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pairs of legs. Seven pairs of legs. And they are interesting because they have on the near the tail. We usually, the female usually keeping some eggs and carrying them for for protection. And even just when small larvae hatching, the female is carrying small small babies together just on on abdomen on the belly for a short period. And then the small babies just spreading out around in a litter. In a cage or just in an original litter in a, in a garden. So these are creatures which I wanted to show you for today originally in a video. If you this system is working very well so I can try to show some others because sometimes several becoming overloaded and video becoming frozen. So if it is working now, I can try to take another video from my stock and show you again. I do not have special presentation, but I have stock of video. So I select a video from my folder and will upload it on a screen and so you can see it together with me. Collection I have here some collections of video files. Which one I can show you? Which one? This one. Very well known. So who are these? This is a very interesting insect and this is a head of a creature from a family Chrysididae, from a older Neuroptera, Chrysididae, Chrysididae, predaceous, predaceous insect with well-developed mandibles and well-developed eyes. So searching for aphids, for sucking aphids. And has a well-developed antenna here on the top of video of the top of the screen moving with this antenna and eyes to recognize the prey very well. Chrysidida chrysopa. Chrysopa carne or another species. I take another video file. This whole insect is well known. People like it very much. Always enjoy it. Yeah. Here we see just a bumblebee. The bumblebee of a species Bombus terrestris or round beetle. Bee, bumble, round bumblebee. Which is feeding on a drop of honey in, on a flower. Just I dropped a cup, small drop of a flower, and honeybee just spread the tongue, or scientific name proboscis, sign of proboscis, or the tongue for feeding. So that's why this is not a special stick, this is not a sting because it's just spreading from a, between mandibles. This is tongue or proboscis, which I used for feeding, for drinking, very the liquid of a nectar or just a honey because honey bees and bumblebees were collecting nectar from flowers using proboscis and tongue as a collecting nectar tool and bringing it 
do this. So take another one. This one is good predator. So who are this predator? You can recognize very well known insect. Who is this insect? Yeah, this insect is a dragonfly. This insect is dragonfly. Why this dragonfly is interesting? Because this dragonfly were flying in a city, so this is urban species came to my apartment place in this summer. I collected it and this butterfly, not this butterfly, this dragonfly laid eggs in captivity. Usually many species of dragonflies lay eggs under the water, inside the water. We just drop eggs on the water and they are just falling down. But some species lay eggs inside stems of plants. So this species but if you keep an insect in cage, in many cases some beetles, butterflies, even dragonflies can just drop down, females we will drop down the eggs from, from their bodies because in this unpredictable situation they lay eggs even in captivity. So this dragonfly lay eggs round, like a small balls, like a small balls and they usually in this shape of eggs this dragonfly lay eggs just inside the water but in captivity laid even in a dry jar and I recorded this situation so it was I kept the, the dragonfly in open box in a jar she was flying a little bit and then understood that she's in a captivity she just dropped eggs in this jar so I can show you next insect and this will be not insect and this will be not insect yes, some people can recognize it or maybe nobody knows who is this Dmitry should know this creature because this creature is living on honeybees. Yeah, this creature was living on a honeybees and I made this video just under the microscope because the size of this creature about uh, two or three millimeters and this is varroa mite, honeybee mite, a small mite which is living on the body of honeybees, which is travel which is traveling to be precise on the body of honeybees. So this female sitting on the hairs of honeybees, traveling from one place to another place, from one beehive to another beehive, from one beehive cells to another beehive cells, searching for larva inside the cell, laying eggs and small larvae of varroa mite will be feeding on larvae of honeybees. So this is a very dangerous pest of beehives. And here quite visible four pairs of legs, but small larvae, small it's quite interesting, but small larvae of varroa mite has just three pairs of legs. When and small larvae they are not so brown, they're usually whitish, white color, small smaller, less than one millimeter, and then they are growing, becoming like a plate about two, three millimeters size, and can going out of a cell of a beehive, of a honeybees, taking on the body, crawling on the body of honeybees, and then moving inside beehive to find a free space or free cell with a larva, and just infesting the larva. And usually in many cases the larva is going to be die, or larva, because varroa mite not only infesting, not only sucking the larva of a 
honeybee, but also transmitting as a vector, transmitting different viruses, virus diseases. For instance, windless virus disease when emerged adult of a bee, honeybee will be without legs or with deformated wings. So virus of deformation of a honeybee's wings, virus of deformation. And this is deformation of, so this is a disease, deformation of wings of honeybees is usually transmitted by varroa mites. And about more than 10 different viruses can be transmitted by this very dangerous mite, varroa mite. More than 10 virus diseases. So we can show it next one. So this is next one. Next video will be about something else. If system is not overloaded, so we can. Well, this one well known insect. Many people enjoy them very much. So who are these? Who are these? This is predator. Predator eating something, eating mealworm. And you can recognize, you can identify it quite easily because very famous insect and this is mantis. Mantis religiosa species widespread in, in Europe and in Asia. And many species of his family mantis, they are distributed all around the world. Mantis are predator, but no phytophagus mantis. And no ma phytophagus mantis, the predator, it means usually feeding on the body of another arthropods and other insects. Here, this, this female is eating not the mealworm, eating the body of a night moth in captivity. I collected mantis near the shop at evening time in August, because in August time they are just spreading from the natural conditions inside the city, very often especially in August time in Kyiv, and they are flying to the light of different shops and easy to be easily to be collected near the lights, near exposition windows expo windows of shops and we are just falling down because we are not flying, we are too heavy but we can fly for short distances if we fall down, we are crawling and fly again like a partially flying, partially crawling and partially just jumping so and then finally we are sitting somewhere near the light near shops so quite easy to collect them and observe in August time even in the city even some new species of mantis, mantidae family, or mantis religiosa, or another species, appeared in more distant areas and they spread to the north from the south and places of normal distribution. So, next one. Next one. Okay, next one. We can show this is a butterfly, one of the species of butterflies of a family Noctuidae, which is usually appearing also in August time, in August and September, with this red and black stripes. So Noctuidae of a genus Catocala, 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 striped nice red striped moth very nice and pretty big size so approximately up to with spread wings about five six centimeters so quite big one when it's closing the wings it's practically invisible so we have this species has a very good decoration on wings like a bark of trees, so eating a caterpillar usually uh, leaves of uh, poplars in a city, and and moths are also after emerging sitting during the daytime on the bark of a trees.
and practically invisible. Practically invisible. Because of this lovely decoration, mimic, which is called mimicry. Mimicry just to the bark of a tree to become invisible. Okay. And maybe last one, but not really the least, but not the last. And the least. So I show you next one, which will be, will be okay. These bees I showed during the springtime. So this is usually appearing in springtime. Usually because sometimes possible to keep the culture in captivity and they can hatch out and emerge in a winter time. If you're keeping the culture, the bees can be heated and they can emerge from their nest. But here we see down on the screen, this is a female with big head, and on the female there is a male. And this is Osmia bees, Osmia bees, solitary bees, and female down again of Osmia carnuta with like horns on, on the head of, on the face of a body. Again, big one. Big individual, this is a female and small one on the top. This is a male with longer antennae. This is moving antennae, moving antennae before mating, trying to make communication with a female. Osmia rufa and Osmia carnuta, two species which are widely spread in Europe and in Ukraine, easy to collect them and easy here, this is second, this is Carnuta, and first one, Osmia rufa, with a reddish color. So this is Osmia rufa. Again, small one. On the top, this is male, and big one, this is a female. Easy to make small nests for them. They're not stinging like honeybees. So that's why they're often used in, as a pollinator in greenhouses. Easy to, to collect a lot of old plants with holes in the, in the stems or just made a holes artificial in a wood and create special like a big hotel, which is called as a big hotel. I can show them later. I, I can show you just even now this small big hotel. I have a video. So, and this big hotel is attracting females to create a nest. Males will be only mating outside of a bee, this bee hotel, but females attracted by the hole will come inside the hole and bring in pollen and nectar and creating the nest. So larvae will be developing and overwintering inside bee hotel. So it's easy to make a, such a solitary bee, Osmia bee culture. So very much easier rather than honeybees colonies. And finally, I show you this is bee hotel, artificially, artificial hotel for these bees. If uh, I started to talk about them, so better to show immediately now. Well, 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 this one. This is a big open bee hotel. This is a wood with holes. Two parts can be attached together. And when two plates with holes open, you see one part with holes, hotel with holes, and second part with holes. And inside these are old nests I open in the winter time for cleaning because inside there are some pollen balls, pollen balls, and also some cocoons. And all bees were already in winter time inside cocoons, but important to put them in a temperate 
in a cold place, not with a warm place, less than 15 centi degrees and degree temperature. So if you keep this cocoons in a warm temperature, like in a house, 20 Celsius degree, we will hatch in the winter time and die. So we cannot survive during the winter in a box for feeding. We can survive just in a cool temperature inside cocoons. Cocoons here on the right part of the screen. These are some cocoons and some yellow balls here because larvae were damaged by paras parasites. Some small flies which attacked larvae and killed the larvae. So larvae didn't survive. I show you again on a bigger screen. So this is artificial nest for these osmia bees, solitary bees or carpenter bees, bees. So again here, yellow pots, yellow places here, not eaten pollen. On the left side, for instance, the ball with destroyed larva. But here brown color, this is cocoons. These are cocoons with some feces. Black color points, these are feces after production of a cocoon. Feces outside of cocoon. But inside of each of these cocoon, uh, there is some a bee inside. Here some um, more brown, like a dark brown and yellow brown places. Here just some feces of flies, parasitic flies. We were eating all balls of pollen, destroyed the larvae, and only produced the pupa of flies, many pupa of flies. So we were already pupated in summer, in not in summer, in autumn, winter time, and it will hatch again in spring. And here, because all this nest was in a warm place, some adults hatched. And you can see in the last, on the last second, here was coming, I can repeat again, on the top was coming adult of a, this solitary bee, Osmia, male, small one, and with a big antenna. So that's why I collected all the cocoons and put them outside on a balcony in a cool time, in a cool place, for, so to stop their emergence. So this is interesting species of uh, not honeybee but solitary bee, Osmia cornuta, Osmia rufa, which can be easily used for breeding in artificial nests or bee hotels, easy for observation and some people even making some business by selling these small uh, tubes. With uh, cocoons or just opening these beehives and collecting cocoons and selling cocoons for farmers which are using alfalfa farming or just for greenhouses because they, this solitary bee will hatch in in springtime, will pollinate maybe tomatoes or cucumbers in the greenhouses and making Again, making nests in artificial nests if you put some stems with holes inside the greenhouses. So, well, they fight. But the advantage that they are not stinging and so they are not irritating for workers who are working in the greenhouses. So, they are beneficial in pollination and very beneficial, not stinging. So, very careful for, for people inside, inside greenhouses. So, you can take the bee, just even try to press the bottom abdomen of bee with and so the bee even a female does not sting or try 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 to sting to be precise but the sting is very small cannot penetrate the skin of hand even hand which is harder usually but not stinging so much maybe for a lady can sting the skin through the sting of lady or just somewhere on very soft skin of a hand maybe but usually do not cannot penetrate. So very careful, very nice solitary bees, osmia bees. So these are 
some video I wanted to show you for today. Thank you for coming. So we will stop our video for today. Thank you for watching. Next videos will be coming very soon or if you are interested to watch previous videos on this stream. So reload this video and you can see it in recorded mode on my channel. So because this is on a front page video of this day. Next day tomorrow will be another video about insects and maybe about some invertebrates. Hopefully more, more good news from Kiev as a safe place because we have an anti-aircraft system which is protecting us and our army, Ukrainian army, is also protecting us against crazy aggressors. Really? And our Ukrainian bees also for Ukraine. So, Ukraine forever. Watch my channel, subscribe to my channel, press like, write comments under this video, ask your questions, and you can visit my Patreon page. You can see in the description what means Patreon for some donations. Patreon page for donations to be patron or donator or just uh, like a supporter of my channel. That's very good. So you can read some stories also on this Patreon page, which is visible under the description of this video. This is for people who enjoy science and how some people in Ukraine in this hard situation, very frustrating situation, say, watch some positive videos, don't become crazy in this war time. So to be motivated, to be enthusiastic, Ukraine forever. Good luck and see you soon on my channel. Bye bye. See you soon. Good night and a good evening. Or just watching in my in the recording mode. See you soon on my channel. Good luck. If you are just Ukraine forever.